Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm back with the second part of the 14th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where in this episode I'm going to be going over the hand from my opponent's point of view that we just went over in part one. Here there's a limp, and with ace-queen suited here, I like a raise to 400. I think this is actually a pretty good play. Uh, you don't really want to limp here because there's a lot of money in the pot, and picking that up is never really that bad. Um, you, you do need to realize, though, however, if you get limp shoved on from the under-the-gun player, or from the, the limper, you're probably going to need to find a fold. So, something worth thinking about. Unless you know the under-the-gun player likes to limp shove with all sorts of stuff. So, unfortunately for I Love 87, J Card Shark, who's me, raises to 1300. And if he knows anything about J Card Shark's game, he knows that J Card Shark has to have a monster. Gets back around to him, and I Love 87 goes all in with Ace Queen. So, the question is, how loose does J Card Shark need to be sh uh, raising here? Because when J Card Shark makes it 1300, he's never folding. Like I discussed in the previous episode, um, I think my, ra my raise, J Card Shark's raise to 1300 here, is a little bit too large. I think a raise to like 1100 would be a lot better, because then I think I Love 87 could have some fold equity. But right here, when, he, when J Card Shark makes it 1300, he's not folding. So. How loose does J Card Shark's range need to be to make Ace Queen suited a shove? So if J Card Shark's shoving this wide, you'll see that Ace Queen suited has about 43% equity, which is probably about what he's going to need to shove and get it all in here, because again, J Card Shark's not folding. So now I have to figure out is J Card Shark. Someone's banging on the door behind me. Sorry if you guys hear that. Um, if Jay Cardshark is Jay Cardshark making this raise with pocket sevens, and I can tell you right here, the answer is absolutely not. Um, is he doing it with Ace Jack suited, King Queen suited, Ace Queen off suit? Definitely not. So I mean, if we go over here and take out all of these hands like this, and even leave in Ace Queen suited, you'll see that I love 87 only has 33% equity here. So this is a spot where you can actually raise for value against the limper, but once any more aggression goes in this pot preflop, your hand's no good unless your opponent's an absolute maniac. Now, let's say instead of J Card Shark shoving, say, aggro 88 shoved. Now he only needs like 33% to call. And even if he has the same very tight range, you'll see that he does have 33% equity. So a call in this spot would actually be okay, even if you know your opponent's very tight. But um, when J Card Shark makes this raise... He has a very strong hand every time, and you're just destroyed. He ends up getting it in and wins. And, you know, a lot of players in this spot, if they have pocket kings, will get upset or go on tilts. But in reality, you should be happy about this, because I Love 87 just handed J Card Shark, like, 15% equity of that pot for free. And, you know, whenever you win equity, that's something to be happy about. And whenever you play poker, you know, you can't get upset when you get outdrawn. If you find yourself getting upset and tilty whenever you get outdrawn, you're not really thinking about poker correctly. As long as you are getting it in good spots, grinding up equity, grinding up chips, and getting it in good, that's something to be very, very happy about. Um, I, I talk about this extensively in Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, which is my book. Uh, volume 1 came out a while ago. Volume 2 is coming out very soon, and there's a huge section on tilt and how to get over sort of like the short-mindedness of a lot of players where they lose for like two weeks, which in live poker is like five tournaments, and they think that they're the most unlucky person in the world. You know, I mean, in live poker, if you lose over the course of like five years, you're either not good or you've been unlucky. You're probably not good. But um, if you lose over like a month or even a year, that's just kind of variance, and it happens. And a lot of people don't want to accept that that's what the game is, but, you know, that is what the game is. Um, like in online poker, if you play every day and play like 50 tournaments a day, it's probably going to be tough to have a losing six-month period. But you can certainly lose over a month, and that's a lot of tournaments to lose over. So don't get stuck on, man, I, I got unlucky, I lost this hand. I'm the most unlucky person in the world. Dwelling on running poorly will do nothing good for you. So Hopefully that'll help you out. Again, check out my book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker, if you want a much more in-depth discussion on that. And if you guys have any hands that you'd like me to review, please feel free to send them in. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.